Hey there, Susie here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to share this special message with you. Now, my co-host Michelle and I love masterminds. Not only do we belong to masterminds, but we also host a mastermind. We started it almost eight years ago, and it is the premier mastermind for women business owners who want to grow their business with a specific focus on marketing. Now, this group is usually completely booked out, and very occasionally we open the doors and invite a handful of women in. So if you're growing your business, but you're struggling with feeling overwhelmed, or like you constantly have a split focus when it comes to your marketing, this could be exactly what you're looking for. We have an amazing time together and the women in the group are extraordinary. They're great cheerleaders, supporters, advisors and colleagues for you. And they're also seeing extraordinary results. We see people cracking the million dollar, two million dollar, three million dollar mark, launching new e-commerce sites that go from zero to ten thousand dollars a month in sales. They're doubling their conversion rates, they're growing memberships, they're selling courses, they're growing their personal brands, and they're getting all kinds of media exposure and speaking opportunities and so much more. You can learn more about the Mastermind and join the wait list over at herbusinessmastermind.com. We're going to open the doors soon, so you definitely want to be on the list to get an invitation. So head on over to herbusinessmastermind.com. You're listening to the Content Sales Podcast, the show all about how to create content to attract, convert, and keep your ideal clients. Welcome to episode 202. I'm Susie Daphnis, and here with me is my co-host, Michelle Thousand. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hey, Susie. I am really doing very well. Thank you very much. How about you? How are you going? I'm good. I've just got a little something in my throat. We should be gone now. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely cleared. <laughs> um, and as this episode goes to air, it's our first episode for 2023. Woo! And I am looking forward to a great year ahead. I know you and I have done most of our planning and within her business, we've done almost all our planning. We've got some awesome projects and events planned. Our reach retreat in Hawaii is almost completely sold out, even though it's in October. And we did that with one short marketing campaign. Our members are kicking goals and thriving. Our masterminders, Michelle, are doing amazing oh things that keep blowing us away and have their years, as we know, already planned out and set up for success. So I am happy things feel really good. Yes, I agree. I, I love that. Uh, just that summary you just rattled off there. It's good to uh, reflect, as you were saying in the episode we just uh, did uh, last time about books, about this idea of reflecting on the gain that you've made. That was a nice little modeling there of how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but we really have had a great year. Mm-hmm. And as we start another new year, another trip around the sun, I'm really looking forward to an awesome year ahead. I feel very enthusiastic and positive about it. And we're so glad you, our dear listener, you are here with us as well as we kick off this year together. And whether this is your first episode with us, you just found us, stumbled upon us, or you've been with us from episode one or any time since, we've had some people say, hey, I found you. And then I loved it. And I went all the way back to episode one and listened. We love making this show for you. And we hope you're mm. in for an amazing year as well. We're going to do everything we can to support you with your content marketing and to grow your business and to get ideas and all the things that help you to attract, convert and keep your ideal customers. And we're fired up. I was about to say it. Oh. Attract, convert, and keep your ideal clients. So there you have it. We are in sync. So um, what we're talking about today can actually, to what Michelle just spoke about, can be a massive boost to the results that you get from your marketing. Uh, and that is why the premise of this episode is why you need to communicate your product or services, benefits versus features, and how you can do that to get more customers buying from you. So I might use the word, and Michelle might use the word products throughout, but just substitute that for products and services if you sell services. But let's start with the definition of some terms. Michelle, what are we meaning when we talk about features and benefits? Mm. Yeah, well, a, a feature of a product, as we're talking about it here on the show today, is really related to an attribute of the product. So it might be if you have a physical product, it's size. Uh, it might be if you sell a, a coaching program, what does it include? Uh, it's, you know, what it, how the action might work if you sell an appliance or something like that. So if you ran a three-day event on personal branding, the features of that event might be its duration. Let's say it's three di- three days. And where is it? Well, let's say it's at a particular venue in Sydney. And what's it called? Well, let's say it's called personal brand success. And uh, 
it's it's just listing off all of those attributes of that event, that product, that program, that service. Other features could be how many people it has capacity for. So let's say you've got 200 seats. Um, It's also what's going to happen on the day. Maybe there's a guest speaker. Maybe there's a breakout session. Maybe there are some hot seats. Maybe you do some, you know, one-on-one live coaching. These are all features or attributes of that event uh, or of your product or of your service. But what the features, and if you're focusing only on features, while they tell us about what this thing is, they don't tell us why that matters. And that's really what your ideal customers are interested in. That's what the people that are out there in the world right now who are thinking about what they're having for dinner tonight and how they're going to pay their bills and whether they should go here or there for a holiday or worried about their kid at school or whatever's going on in their mind, what is going to get them to leave that thought track and start thinking about what you would like them to think about is why whatever it is you're talking about matters to them. That is what they're interested in. So why does it matter that your event is three days or that there are hot seats or that there's a particular guest speaker? Well, that's where your benefits come in. That's why you Mm. want to be leaning on those benefits. Benefits describe why those features matter. I'll say that again. Benefits describe why your product or services features matter and how they help your target audience to do whatever it is they want to do. So, for example, while a hot seat, and that is, you know, you might have somebody come up and you might review their personal brand live for everybody in the at the event. While that's a feature, the fact that you get one-to-one reviews of your personal brand has the benefit of helping you mm. see your blind spots, communicate more clearly, attract more of your mm. perfect customers, charge more so you can be more profitable, feel more confident, get more of the opportunities you really want to work on. So those benefits that I've just articulated, you want to be sharing those when you are talking about what this event is and focusing far less on the features. Hmm. I'll take two, Michelle. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds so good. I want the benefits. I want the benefits. Give me all the benefits. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so here's the thing, and that is the challenge for most business owners, is that we have these really amazing products and services. And while that is great, Our obsession with creating those really great products can mean that we have a bit of tunnel vision or a lot of tunnel vision when it comes (laughs) to how we communicate how great our product is. Um, Because we spent weeks, sometimes months, choosing, for instance, the cleaning products that we might use in our commercial cleaning business. We can tend to think that something our audience wants to know is that. But the chances are is that talking about the fact that you use hypoallergenic, all-natural cleaning products can be a bit of a yawn factor, actually, to your audience until you point out the benefits of that feature. For example, instead of saying we use only specially imported hypoallergenic, all-natural cleaning products free from sodium hydroxide and other toxic corrosives, which is all a mouthful and probably doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people who may not be as educated about the product as you are, you can focus on the benefits instead by saying something like, we use only natural cleaning products, which means they're gentler on your floors, sinks, drains, and other surfaces. So they last longer. They look great and they're fresher and cleaner as well. Plus studies show toxic cleaning products can cause respiratory problems and allergic reactions. So your family is safer and can breathe easier. And even your plants will thank you because toxic cleaning products can actually harm your plants as well. And then there's the benefit to the environment, which means we're doing our part to help create cleaner oceans and save wildlife. And it's more cost effective, so it's saving you money, health and the environment, while also creating a guilt-free, sparkling clean space that you'll love to come home to, right? You can hear and see the difference there. Features are more like a list of what's included, whereas benefits, they actually help people see what's in it for them, which is ultimately what we want our marketing to be demonstrating. Uh, Great example. And I love what you did there to show how you really do need to spell the benefits out for people. And this is the trap. This is the bit that we can forget as people who are passionate about every detail of our product or service. Never assume that people will join the dots and just jump to the benefit simply by telling them what the feature is. 
So in your mind, and this is what I see happen all the time, Susie, people have a feature like these are non-toxic cleaning products. Right. And in their mind, they know that that means, therefore, your surfaces will be, it's gentler on your surfaces, you won't have an allergic reaction, but they don't articulate that. There's this assumption that just because you say they're non-toxic cleaning products, people just automatically know why that's good for them. And this is the exact moment that you need to have like a little lever in your brain that goes (laughs) Mm. and a siren that goes off because you're assuming that people are going to be able to join the dots and jump to the benefits simply by hearing the feature. And that's often what you, the product owner can do, but you've got that curse of knowledge. You're living and breathing your product and you can overestimate by a long way, let me tell you, (laughs) Mm -hmm. how interested others Mm. are in those same features that you spend all your day and all your time thinking about that you've put money into designing and researching and that you're super passionate about, you know, every single detail about it. Guess what? That is not relevant to your audience or most of that is not relevant to your audience. And there's a great analogy to explain this that I learned from a colleague of mine, Verinda Normand, and it goes like this. When we're explaining our product to someone, there are really three things we need to cover. One is what Verinda calls the pain island. That's where your customers are now. They're living on pain island. Mm. They've got these current pain points, these current challenges. The other thing we need to talk about is Pleasure Island, and that's where your customers want to get to. They they know there's this other place, and it's that future solution they're looking for, the desired state, when the problem has gone away or when the thing they really want to have happen in their life has happened, when they are thinner, when they have um, a clean house, when their child that's struggling at school can now read with ease, whatever it is, there's this other place called Pleasure Island. And then the third thing is what Verinda calls the boat. And that's the thing that's actually going to help them get from Pain Island to Pleasure Island. Now, the boat is your product. It's your three-day event. It's your cleaning service. It's your um, widget that might help people to do something in their home or a tool or a pool cleaner, whatever it is. That is the boat. And It is the mechanism, the thing that's going to help them get from Pain Island to Pleasure Island. And while you do need to talk a little bit about the boat, like if I if I was literally needing to go from one island to another, I would probably ask, does the boat have any holes in it? What's the boat made of? How many people can fit on the boat? Um, Does it have an engine? What sort of waves can it survive? So there's a few things I might want to know about the boat. Mm, mm. So you do need to let them know the boat's made of fiberglass. It's a certain size. There's a reliable motor that can make the journey. The boat's made the journey before, but you don't want to go into too much detail about the boat. And this is where you can slip into too much detail because you know everything about the boat. You know every nut and bolt on the boat. Even though you might have obsessed over those details, they're not relevant. They're Mm. not interesting to your customer. They just want to know enough about the boat to know it can get them from Pain Island to Pleasure Island, from the situation they're in now to the outcome that they want. Mm. And when we're talking about Pain Island, Pleasure Island, and I love uh, the way that you've described that, I want you to know that it's as applicable whether you sell earrings or ballet shoes or high-priced in-house training or mentoring for women with menopause, there is a pain island in that person's life. That's why they're looking for your support. There is a pleasure island that they want to get to. And so it's starting to think about using this beautiful uh, methodology that Michelle has described and looking at, oh, I'm not talking about the boat. Mm -hmm. And so I want to give you an example from our wonderful mastermind, uh, Chantelle Gilbert from Blue Gum Electrical. She um, installs solar systems into people's homes. And so Pain Island, for her customer, that is your, and remember Pain Island is your customer's current pain points, is that electricity bills are high. They're often really hot in summer because they don't want to put the air con on because it's way too expensive. So they end up losing sleep. The kids are grumpy. Whereas Pleasure Island for those families is that they want a future where they pay very little for their power, that they can leave the air conditioning running all night during the summer and everyone can get enough sleep and they're not stressed about when the power bill is going to arrive and so they can just enjoy life more. What they need to know a little about but not too much about is 
the solar solution that you can help them with, the specific details of your solar panels and how it's installed and how long it takes and all those things. But remember, you need to share only enough for people to feel like the features can deliver the desired outcome. The rest of the time, you're speaking to the benefits. So you might talk about the size of the battery or the type of material the solar cells are made of, but I only say that you can then point to the benefit that that particular feature delivers, like being able to save on power costs 24-7, even when the sun isn't shining, or being able to power all your appliances all at once, even if you have a swimming pool and need to run your heating and air conditioning and multiple appliances all at the same time. This is so good because it's giving real uh, mm. examples, real putting flesh on the bones of this concept. So a really simple way to ensure that you don't get too bogged down in talking about the boat, the features of your product too much, is to adopt this really simple framework. So but earlier when I said, you know, you want to have that little lever and the siren that goes off that says, warning, warning, you know, you're getting too much into the features, you're getting too into the weeds here. When that alarm bell goes off, every time that you kind of see that that's happening, every time you're thinking about mentioning a feature, you want this knee-jerk reaction to be that you add a phrase to that feature. So if you're talking about the solar battery and it's the, the life of the battery, you want to add a so that or a what that means statement. And this is where you are joining the dots for people. Remember earlier we were saying don't assume that just because you've explained the feature that people will join the dots as to what that means for them. So these phrases, so that or what that means, help you to open the door on the benefit. So in this instance, we're using the feature as a springboard into a benefit. We'll talk a bit later how you can just focus on benefits uh, in other places in your sales pages and your conversations and so on. But if you are talking about features, always link that to a benefit. So for example, extending that solar uh, example that Susie was just talking about, you could say our solar solution includes a 44 kilowatt hour battery. Now, if you were just talking about features, you'd end it there. But the little tactic that we're talking about you adopting this simple framework is that you then insert a so that or what that means statement. So now I'm going to read it to you again with the so that or what that means statement added. Our solar solution includes a 44 kilowatt hour battery. What that means is you will never run out of power even if it rains for a week. And even if you have a busy family who likes to leave all their appliances on at the same time. So that means cheap about power bills without having to compromise or negotiate who gets to use what device. You can watch television while the pool cleaner is going and the hairdryer is on and the dishwasher is working and everyone will <laughs> be happy. <laughs> so it just that, opens the door on better copy, right? Right. It just, now I can see it. I can feel it. I can see, I can hear that hairdryer going. I can see, <laughs> hear the dishwasher going and everybody's happy because we still are not going to have this massive power bill because we've got that 44 kilowatt hour battery. Mm. I love it. And I love that framework because it causes us to come up with the benefits. So the, so that, and what this means. And it's such a good reminder when you start listing features, make sure you have at least one benefit. So this is going to be Michelle's point on your sales pages and your emails on your websites. Um, and ideally you're going to have multiple benefits for every feature. Like Michelle just pulled out the, you know, there's the hairdryer and then there's the, all the other things that are happening on account of this one particular feature being the battery. Um, and the big news is that if you have a feature that doesn't really have a clear benefit, don't focus on it. Even if you love it <laughs> or it's an expensive or difficult part for you to include, it's not going to be relevant to your customer. It's not going to add value. So you don't want to highlight that. You may not even want to talk about it at all. So too often we lose our customer's interest and attention by talking about irrelevant facts that aren't clearly linked to compelling benefits, like how many modules are in our course mm. or you know, how just things that actually are not benefits to them because what they're looking for is the benefits. You're making yeah. me think about that phrase, you know, um, 
you know, you sold me into this and now you're selling me back out of it. And and sometimes <laughs> I feel like, oh, you know, I know yes. somebody's like, they're just telling me all the things. It was like, I was ready to buy. And now I'm thinking, I just got to get out of here, you know, and uh, I want to stick a fork in my leg. And you don't want your customers to feel that way. And they often will when you drone on and on and on about your precious features. So it all comes back to that fundamental idea of what's in it for me. When you are really being in the shoes of your customer, and this is something we've talked about right from episode one of this show, when you're making that imaginative leap that Frank Luntz talks about, when you are stepping really, you're stuffing yourself into the shoes of your ideal customer, and you know that person, you've really taken the time to understand them, then you know how they want to answer that question, what's in it for me? You know what you need to be saying to them so that they go, oh, that's just what I'm looking for. Oh, that would be really helpful. Oh, I'd really love that. Oh, yes, that is the thing that I need right now. So that is the language your market speaks. They just want to know what your product can do for them. So always bring it back to their situation. The problem you're solving, that's Pain Island, or the desired outcome you're helping them to get. And ideally, you're helping them to get that desired outcome faster and easier. So they're getting off pain island and they're getting to pleasure island. We're not just talking um, Mm -hmm. about all the things that the boat can do to get you there. Mm -hmm. And it's such a, Susie, I think it's such a difficult thing to let go of. It 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 can feel like Mm -hmm. a safety blanket almost, you know, And if but I have to tell them everything or they're not going to see the value, but Mm. they see the value. This is the irony. They see the value just by explaining to them where they're at right now and then where they need to be and how you're going to help them to get there. So I mentioned before, we're not just talking about the benefits of the features. So while we're saying definitely link every feature to at least one benefit, if not multiples, you also want to find other ways to Mm. double down on those benefits. Mm. So tell stories, show customer case studies where people just like your target customer made it all the way to Pleasure Island and got that outcome. You know, you've got lots and lots of Mm. ways you can be piling on the benefits. It's not just too limited to when you're explaining the features, but it absolutely has to happen when you're explaining the features. I love that example because the customer stories are going to be all about the benefits. They're not going to say, I did your six-week program and, uh, you know, it was because it was six weeks and you gave me all the templates and handouts. No one's going to say that. They're going to say, I used to have a meno belly and now I feel like I'm free from my menopause symptoms or whatever it is that you help people with. I used to, my feet would ache and now I can walk for ages and so I'm getting my exercise in or whatever those things are and so I feel so much better. So I want to go back to the solar example though because that's such a good one. You could have a series of bullet points that speak to multiple benefits, some of which we mentioned earlier, cheaper power bills. You don't ever have to worry about blackouts, power all the time, even in bad weather, right, even if it rained for a week or if the power lines are down. Quiet so that you can have it near the main part of your house. You don't need a big yard with our solar solution. Super efficient solar cells mean you can power a busy family home with even the smallest of roof space, right? And you're also handling objections in that. Plus, you could then show the story of Peter and Kathy who have three teenagers who use a lot of hair dryers and (laughs) and they live in a duplex. And even with the little roof on their duplex, they got all the power that they need and it was fast and easy. And now their power bill is cut in half. So good. It's sort of just like when you you put it like that, Susie, why would we just labor on about the features? I so, know. Uh, it's a head shift, though. It really is. It's it is. habitual. And as I'm listening to what we're saying, I'm like, I could probably go and visit a couple of places where we have sales copy and just make sure, you know, that we are sort of really diving into the benefits. Um, and when you have a new product or service, mm. You may not have the evidence that we're talking about, but certainly you're going to gather that, you know, once you've done that and you've got some customer stories. Because like I said, the customer stories, Peter and Kathy with the three teenagers, they're going to be talking about the benefits. They're not going to be talking about, you know, we don't want to buy anything unless there's an incredible benefit for us. No one needs another thing or another course or another membership. It's all about the benefits. So how do you tease those out? Yeah. You're so right. And, you know, Peter and Kathy in their testimonial or their case study, their video, they're not going to mention the 27-page manual. 
known. <laughs> but we somehow rather get hung up on talking about those kinds of things and elevating them to really big priority status in our communication. And I, as you were just talking then, uh, I think it's about just getting buried in the weeds of our business. You know, we're in the doing. And so we've spent three months building this. We've thought about the manual. We know it's 27 pages. We know it's got this and this in it. It's just where our head's at. And this is a reminder, a call to everybody to pop your head back up and and remember, oh, I'm talking to another person that doesn't know anything about this product. How do they need to be communicated with? And it is a pause and it is a rewiring of the brain. And it is, I think, a very generous, connected, empathetic way to communicate with our audience. So Susie, you touched on this just a minute ago, and I want to pick up on your point about objections, because one other thing for bonus points is it's really awesome if your benefits can be speaking to overcoming objections. So you touched on it a little bit there, Susie, with some of those examples. So what I like to do, a way to help me find benefits. So if you're struggling, you're thinking, I'm not exactly sure what these benefits are, or um, I sort of know the obvious things, but I want to be a bit more Um, I want to go a bit further with the benefits. A really cool thing to do is to think about the objections that you're hearing from people and then think how you can flip those into benefits. So I'll give you an example so that this weird concept I'm talking about makes a bit of sense. But let's just say that you knew people were worried that the solar panels would look ugly on their roof. Maybe you're talking to people and they're saying, look, We really want solar, but, you know, my husband thinks that they look ugly or uh, I really am interested in solar, but I look around at all the people that have put solar on in my street and it just ruins the way their house looks. So you're starting to hear this theme of the uh, appearance Mm. of the panels is a sticking point. People are holding back from buying because of that. So you know people are worried about the solar panels, that they might look ugly on their roof. Now think about how you can flip that objection into a benefit. And here you might weave in a little bit of feature, but you're doing it really, really purposefully to explain a benefit and to address an objection. So you might say, the slimline design means our solar panels look great and blend into your roof, so you can't even see they're there. And we've got 17 panel colors so we can color match to your roof. Mm. So it really does make the solar panel practically invisible. So that means, remember, there's our phrase, you can keep your house looking beautiful just like you planned it to be. So you can see how that is absolutely a benefit that you might not have known you needed to speak to, but you can get to it by thinking about the objections. So Susie, a great place to get that info about what benefits are going to be most relevant to our audience is to use our customer language. Mm, I love that. And you kind of gave us a little bit of an example there with someone saying, my husband thinks it's ugly. Like that is customer language that you can really use. So the more you can use your customer language, and we talk about this inside of our mastermind all the time, the better. So if you've got survey results, or maybe you've got a spreadsheet that has answers from when people join your Facebook group, for instance, and you ask them to complete a question or a short survey, or maybe you've got customer service emails or customer service questions that you've received over time. They are a way to get your exact customer language. For example, for us, when people join many of our programs, we have an application process where we gather a lot of information just to ascertain whether that program is the right fit for that person. And so there's something that we can go back over and get all that great info. So what is it that you already have that you can go back over and get all that info when you're writing your sales page? or your emails or your social posts or mapping out that webinar or that proposal or thinking about how to structure the sales conversation, whether you're going to have that in person or online. For example, someone might write that they're not very techie. They may say those exact words, I'm not very techie. And they're worried that they won't be able to manage their solar system and keep it working. Now you can use that language without changing it really. Um, to handle this objection, right? So that I'm not techie is an objection they have around your product. So how can you turn that into a benefit? Remember, you want to use as much of their language as possible. Don't sanitize it, just flip it around. So you might say something like, and what if you're worried that you're not very techie? You might be worried that you won't be able to maintain your solar system and keep it working. You can see we've just turned their language 
into a statement. That's why you continue on. That's why we include a 10-year service warranty where you have our experienced team on call seven days a week for repairs and maintenance. So you never have to worry about a thing. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and I love to oh, Chantel, it- Chantel, if you're not listening, I'm going to ping yeah. you and say, listen to this episode. There's lots of great content here for you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love too how, you know, then the feature, which is the 10-year service warranty, just kind of makes sense. You are right. just not bashing people over the head with it. There, it, it suddenly feels mm. like something super, super valuable. I love yeah, it. I love it. Love it. Now, I want to address one thing that can crop up. So even if all of this is making sense to you and uh, you are thinking, yeah, look, I'm, I'm on board, Susie and Michelle, there's still the possibility, just maybe just saying, that when you next sit down to write a sales email or a sales page or a proposal or you're in the middle of a sales one-on-one conversation with one of your ideal prospects in a meeting, then it's possible that you slip back into focusing on the features of your product. And this can happen when we're nervous, when we haven't quite practiced the art of this enough, uh, when we just slip back into the old ways. So I want to firstly say that's normal. So it takes practice to always be thinking about benefits versus features. And I just want to say, just trust us you will get better at it. It is about having the intention. It's about having that light turned on and using those little phrases so that what that means, coming at it from the customer's perspective, what is in it for them, what are the objections going on in their mind and how can I flip that to a benefit and then maybe as I'm explaining the benefit, bring in a feature. But it all starts with making that mental leap as Everything does. All growth begins with this mental leap. But what we're talking about here is making the mental leap from believing that you need to, that you have to tell people a ton of stuff about all the things in your product. They're not buying your product. They're buying your offer. And we talk about that in a lot of detail in another one of our episodes, which is how to craft an offer that sells. And we'll put the link to that in our uh, show notes for today's show. And that's more about how you add bonuses and how you kind of craft all of that. But right now, what they need to know about is the benefits. So my big piece of feedback to most people, when they ask me to review their sales page or their content or their pitch is this, they are spending way, 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 way (laughs) too much time talking about the boat. The Mm. sail is made of carbon fiber imported Mm. from Germany from a man that learned the craft from his great grandfather. It was passed down through several generations and it has a special fiberglass hull crafted from the same design the America's Cup winning boat used. And it was designed by Ben Lexon and on and on and on and on and on. We think that's what people want to hear, but they don't. They don't. We think that we can rationalize them into buying from us when actually it is about emotionalizing them into buying from us, into helping them tap into their desire, into the real fed upness with the pain that they're in. That Mm -hmm. is what's going to move people to buying from us. They only need a little dash of info about the boat. What you need to lead with is those benefits, what's in it for them, a hook that's going to get their attention and then a pitch that's going to keep it going, keep their attention with you, keep it on you as they see more and more and more how your product or service is going to make their life better. And then you're just gradually weaving in those features that make sense at the time. Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and to what you're saying, the more specific you can be about yeah. the benefit, um, the better. So with our solar example, once more, rather than saying we're going to reduce their power bill, can you say it's going to cut their power bill in half? And again, once you have some testimonials and case studies, you might know those numbers, right? You might have someone who did that or they ended up with a $0 electricity bill. Can you say that? Or if you help people grow their confidence, don't just say that they'll be more confident. Think about specific situations that they'll be more comfortable in, like during job interviews or when negotiating their salary or when speaking in public. 
And all this comes back to putting your ideal client in the center of your marketing, as Michelle was talking about, getting really clear on who that person is and what's really going on for them. What is the pain? What do they need? What do they want? What are some of the big objections they might have that are stopping them from being able to move forward with you? We talk a lot about how to define your ideal client Um, in one of our very first episodes. Michelle, it was episode number two, and it's still an episode that we keep going (laughs) back to, and we are at 202. So it's definitely want to check that out. We'll put a link to it in our show notes. So just to recap, your mission is to make the shift from being focused on talking about your products or services features to thinking more about how you can communicate the benefits. It might feel counterintuitive to start with, but it's a habit. It's a new habit for you to form, and we've given you a great framework here. But give it a try. Let us know how you go. We love to hear from you. If you have questions about this episode or anything we've discussed, then please get in touch with us. And one of the best ways to do that is to head on over to Facebook, search for the Content Sales Podcast Facebook page, and you can ask any questions or contact me, Michelle, right there. And we love to share tips like these with as many business owners as possible. Those of you who are in our Marketing Success Mastermind, then you know that we dive deep into topics like this because they're the things that make a big difference to your content marketing. And we love to share tips on the podcast with as many business owners as possible too. So we would love it if you would leave us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. We have over 100 five-star ratings and reviews. I want to thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, Give us a rating or review on Apple Podcasts. We would so appreciate it. Someone who we recently had on the show who went on to leave us an amazing review is the lovely Sky Anderton of Ruby Olive uh, Jewelry and Accessories. She was our guest on episode 197. If you haven't listened, please listen. The episode was How Video Storytelling Grew My E-Commerce Sales. And Sky said this, Uh, Because we posted when the episode came out and uh, I think on our Instagram, our Her Business Instagram account. And she said, what a super fun afternoon chatting with these legends. And she tagged me and Michelle. Uh, She said, I've been seriously listening and learning from these two on the podcast for so many years. So it was super special to be their guest. Thank you, Susie and Michelle for having me. Um, And then she talked about her episode being a goodie. And indeed it is. And that is episode 197. We will put a link to it in our show notes along with links to a few other things that we've mentioned here today. And you will find those details over on our website at herbusiness.com forward slash product benefits. That's herbusiness.com forward slash product benefits. I cannot wait to hear what you change in your copy, on your sales pages, in your pitches, in your proposals, using the formula and the information here today. So do, do, do let us know over on our Facebook page. Michelle, what have we got coming up in episode 203? We are talking about rebranding. So whether it's a business rebrand or a specific product that you might need to rename or rebrand or reposition. We're going to be sharing our top tips on that. You and I, we've done our fair share of Mm -hmm. rebranding, rebranding products, rebranding businesses, Mm -hmm. and uh, it is quite a process. We're going to be sharing when you should do it, when you should not do it, and then what you actually need to think about to communicate that, to navigate that whole process. And uh, that's going to be a good one, whether you're listening because you're rebranding right now, Mm. or whether you just think I need to bank this information because this could be something that's in my future. uh, It is definitely one to watch out for. Mm. And as Mitchell said, we're also going to talk about when you really don't need to rebrand. So that is all coming up uh, two weeks from now. If you don't already subscribe to the show, then go ahead and click that subscribe button wherever you are listening to us. And we will be back with a brand new episode in not too far away. Michelle, anything you want to say before we go? Loved our chat today, Susie, Mm, and I I really enjoyed it. I mean, we are such marketing geeks. I mean, it's all day. Uh, But I do want to say my very last comment is it's not about the boat. (laughs) It's not about the boat. You've heard it here. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time right here on the Content Sales Podcast. Bye for now.